around it, looking at them in different different types of tags. Oh no, I'm gonna have to stop the squeak in a minute. I know, getting overbearing. Um, ha ha ha. The squeak in the bearing is getting overbearing. <laughs> Yeah, I shouldn't have said anything because I ruined it. <laughs> There's like this subtle and out there, and then I ruined it. We'll come back later. Debbie in Michigan. Michigan. Huge water buckle. It even looks a little bit like a white tail without the different horns.
Yeah, there's a lot of vegetation between them, between us and him. Funny that happens as soon as I get a question, then suddenly I see something, and then I stop and I don't answer the question. I think it was Donna was asking about him if I've ever seen any strange animal friendships or where one animal adopts another. Mm. I only know of, um, I mean it happens a lot in the domestic world and where the domestic world crosses over with the zoo world where you get tigers raising piglets or um, dogs raising tigers or I've had it personally in, uh, German Shepherd raising kittens, suckling kittens. Um, but it's normally it's all artificial circumstances. Let's move on. He's moving on. Well, wow, how did I know he would do that? I guess I just know my water button. I read his mind. I was in tune with energy. Wow, look at it. It's almost framed there. It's on a tire. Like it's almost framed by that fallen marula. What do you mean, like that? Uh, where? But are you free of that plant now? Yep. But now it's framed by those fallen by that fallen tree. What a buck. What a buck. Pass the buck. Jigga jigga. No, 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 no. That's crazy. the radio and I'm getting so lost in what they're talking about but um,
of a broom that's covered me up. Um, but I've been listening to the radio. I think when you do that, I'm going to try and track that down a little bit more. Okay. The audio. To tell the audience. Okay, I'm just spraying underneath the car. And I'm going to sort out the sound. Hold on, guys. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Welcome back to Wild Earth TV. My name is... Where is it looking? What, the camera? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get you. <laughs> no product placement. <laughs> no product placement. When in need, use Q20. Let's try to come up uh, with a jingle, a rhyme, a jingle for Q20. For that squeak that chases that the leopard. Yeah. Something like that. Let's try to come with a jingle before the end of this drive. For those niggling Land Rover squeaks <laughs> that can only happen. I won't say anything further. Let somebody put words in my mouth. Okay. So. Quite a lot happening on the radio. Covered in sand and fur. Elephant dung. That's very dry. <laughs> Formed like a soft cock of dried grasses to cushion while I lay underneath the vehicle, slaving away at a squeak.
help very much. Maybe it's a bit of wearing. Yeah, but that now nah, the door. Well, my feet. Wait, yo, what's that? That. Yeah, 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 that. That's this whole console on the steering column. That's probably going to be affected by every single bump. So it can't go there. As much as it, we can put it. Well, at least during the drive, I don't need to see it because I know there's enough E for enough. If I turn the sound down, I'll move it. Later. Right. Again. Hopefully fix the squeak a little bit. Go west. And... Hopefully we'll get... a chance to see something this afternoon. Watch this space. Cloud has been when we started. Was this road being dragged? Come 
Sometimes they use big old tractor tires. Sometimes they use all sorts of things. Chains. Drag nice and smooth. Time for road work to be done. By the look of things. It can only work on where it's time. One road that's being worked on now is that Mungwa Road, which is going to be a fair time. It's had its difficult spot. This is actually going to change quite rapidly in the next week or so because suddenly the silver cluster leaf is losing its leaves. I mean, here's one, lost almost all of them. Um, they go through quite a quick leaf change. They don't lose their leaves and stay dormant. They lose their leaves and the new ones will start coming out pretty soon. The wattles have also lost all their leaves. Colours now belong to Kambutis and bush willows. Bush willows are starting to go yellow and brown. It's very late in the season. Very, very late. The cold snap in June should have sealed their fate. Oh, that rhymes too. Almost. Oh, hello, you. You're just watching us pass by and not even saying a thing. What are you smelling? Hello. Are your nose in the air with me? Don't you walk away like that.
Hmm. Around these peaks also starting to get the cold while we're waiting for the digger to start. blue signal in the zip, it's a very deep zip. Just to warn you, do not adjust your head. This is a perfect glitch in the space time continuum. Half a spice form. Yeah, that cream colored one up there. Does. Um. You know, it's the closest bush to us across the bank there that's quite high off the ground. Little yellow yes, those little fluffy oh, thingies. Okay. Those are what a lot of flowers look like. That's a type of spice horn, a type of Maitinus. I think. But well, Maitinus might have had its name changed. I'm not too sure. But since I'm very, very interested in. You can't. No, well, it's just. <laughs> okay, so I'll go back a bit. That is far away, though. for disease control, CDC, maybe, or whatever, whatever body, maybe Department of Fish and Wildlife, whoever deals with alien species, because those things can multiply, and if you have African land snails starting to invade a nice, hot, warm, and moist environment like suburban gardens, well, but the baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. Mm. Alien invasion. Area. Pardon? Area. Area 54. Yes. No, Area 54, isn't it? <laughs> 
Yes, David, send me a question. I was wondering if the email was even working today. Email is closed. Roger in Wisconsin. Okay, so Roger asked earlier this morning on affective zinnia. Um, I see it's quite good timing there, Roger, since we're talking about an alien species that's about to invade Texas. And I picked up a zinnia flower today and put it on the dashboard. Um, I also had another question that I've completely misread. Um, hopefully we're going to have good signal. Hopefully... Hopefully we're going to have good signal. Um, long one extension up to southwest. We should have signal up there. It will be circular head. Oh, it's Bradley. Oh, Bradley. How do you do, Bradley? Look, one little spot of sun in the sky. Okay, excuse me, I'm taking my earpiece out. Taking my earpiece out. Lucas! Bradley! Fine and you. How are you for? Welcome back. Thank very you good very much. Hello, Teresa. Hello, Teresa. Oh, good. Yeah. We're watching you. I think I'm okay. Oh, okay. Oh, good afternoon to you. Hello. Did you do Dombaya this morning? Yeah. Did you see any Mkonza going south? Dombaya. No, because it's on top of yours. For my fuzzy? No. My daughter? Yeah. Uh, you did sick now. Yeah. And I'm fond of Um sure, they are walking all over the place. They've had yeah. they've had hunters for four days running around in circles. Um I've I've been spent my own fair amount of time after them and it's just been fruitless. I'm going so out it's time yeah. for them to pop out. Yeah. They'll be waiting for you to come back. I know. They just uh, waiting for you to get. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. <laughs> where where bus are they? Where do you? Because when we went today, I don't know if it's the same email that they got going from that Ilky Luke. No, I don't think so. I think she's still down there. Towards she's still TikTok. there. She did. Where did I see her tracks? She's on. She was also on Strickland. They've been between Fence Line and Strickland. Yeah. I'm sure they've had at least two kills there in the last week because they haven't moved from there. But he, there also he's there a couple of old tracks on Hamakop loop from him and then he must have come through the river and I had him on Bush uh, Bushwillow and then he, he came up Dombe and then there's tracks now going back down south on Dombe. Because I saw where he had a fresh uh, On where? All the way down. Um, Mango One. Yeah. Yeah. On my daughter on Mango One. Yeah. And there was also he was also outside. He he, he he ducks under the fence at the river cross. Uh, yeah. So uh, he went out in and out there a couple of nights ago. They must still be hanging. They're hanging around there. I said I'll be the pan this morning. Yeah. I'll go and check now. Again. And then of course there was that Shambhu and Yari that came through there and they obliterated everything. But it's good because now you'll see whatever's yeah. on top. 
This is good. I'm going to see if I can get the signal at Bingo's Dam. I'm hoping I can. You said you can, you can get signal at Lollapan? No. No. I battle at, even at um, Conquer. Wilder.tv. Well, that's TV. Yeah. yeah. No, but TV. Well, there's the TV. Um, or even try live dot TV. We live right now, and my live audience waiting for me to answer questions. They send us questions. Wow. I actually can talk. To, I'm talking to all over the world right now. Hello. I hear you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't put your pictures on because we don't have to see Tara's in, in Leidenberg, she's doing her leopard study there. She's actually doing a pet now. In leopard? Yeah, but the leopard from the leopard project, the Tingwe leopard project. They're monitoring a whole... Sorry? He's living down in in South Coast, Guazulu. He married Shannon. Oh, okay. And they had a baby. Oh, okay. They got a baby. He's got a 3D filming school. Yeah. Oh, he's getting it off the ground. All right. Wild one way. Yes. Um. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Take care. Mom. See you soon. When do you guys leave? End of the month. End of this month. Yes. Okay. So actually, before we go, you must come over for bra. No, we must. Uh, okay. Or okay. Let's get PSL or something. <laughs> Oh yeah? Bye. Such a very pretty girl. I agree. Um big hyena. Where was I? What were we doing? What was I saying? Um Gosh, I forgot. You're talking about uh, that girl's eyes. That girl's eyes. And I'll touch your soul. <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> come back. Mark, first to Aaron. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> first to Aaron. The alien flower, that's right. Thank you, Erin. Not pretty girls with gorgeous <laughs> eyes. After the question was whether why it is that it's so dangerous, or why is it that it's such a bad thing? It might be an alien, but why is it bad? That's a good point, because you do get alien species of plants, or other alien organisms that are necessarily bad. We still have to do a bit of a job. I've always liked to be but not down. Okay, this is my universal going. David, have we got a lock or
listening, Nada. Yeah. But that must be better. David, come in. Ah, now I can hear you. Yeah, antenna fell down. I'm not listening as well because it's cutting me out. can eat Bithynia. So it is taking the place of an indigenous species or several indigenous species of plants that possibly, not possibly, see, was, they are part of the environment. They are more vital to the environment than an alien species. It's like the bass that have put in, bass and trout that have been put in some of our rivers and things that have eaten their way through several species of fish that are now extinct. It's like the rabbit problem in Australia, they got so... It's like the cane toad, that's even worse, the cane toad problem in Australia. That's even worse. They... There is a difference between a species that lives or, or is found in a new place where it doesn't belong and where, whether it becomes an aggressive invading species. Look at the zebra mussels in... where are the zebra mussels? Um, is it up in Boston Harbor, New York? Some of the harbors, I think. Zebra mussels. Uh, gosh, uh, there are examples second to none. The other plant, plants that we have that are called alien aggressive invading species, things like Lantana Samara from South America, things like Opuntia jointed cactus from Central America, things like uh, some of the wattle species, Roy, what we call Roycron, and um, some of the They are the most aggressive invading species, the wattle down in the Cape, where we have one of the biggest and most important botanical biomes on the planet, second to only, second only to the Amazon, in terms of our species of plants in what we call the, the Cape Fainbush. Yet the Cape Fainbush is under threat from things like Roycon and silver wattle, black wattle, um, 
point Paul Jackson Paul Jackson and, and the, the problem is that the seed from two centuries of these trees becoming alien the seed load there's something like 30 to 50 thousand seeds per square meter and the seed bed goes 30 okay, call it inches goes down to um, 12 to 15 inches so the zinnias are not that bad as yet but they can be and they will be and so there's no way of eradicating them they are let loose they are already wild and there's very little to stop them a blackjack and I'm think of others there are others anyways any space more than Gala thing on them again in a minute. So I'm hoping that signal will stay calm here. We were trying on the other side of the strange line this morning where I thought we were sort of where we were losing signal. So maybe this side we'll be lucky. I don't know if that answers the question, but ultimately it's just that they potentially can become so overbearing that they can take the place of important local species that provide more nutrition and more benefit to the environment and everything in it. Unlock with a guy letting on there. That's it. I'm not getting any response from anyone on that side. random but we 
we got this format. Like There's one mark here just arrived at this lock. Yeah, sir. View of them with, that are especially the algae, which, um, I'm going to see if we can get a visual of them from. So we try to yeah. maneuver the vehicle as best as we can. We were on the other side of him, next to the dam, where we were able to watch him from the other side. But we've been battling to get a signal that's actually in the bowl of the dam itself. And unfortunately, it's just a little bit too low. It's a matter of a couple of feet difference between where we are now. But at least the... Uh, He's going to call. He's about to call. And get up. He's actually also about to. He's going to yawn and get up soon now too. Looking for his newfound friend. The only place we can get signal here is over here. So this is a young male from the Black Dam Pride. We haven't seen him for a little while. I was looking for him this morning and I couldn't come this way because I didn't want to lose signal too much during the drive like we've done this, this afternoon. There we go. Call. Yawn and call. Uh, it's not a rule call. That's just a location call. He's just going, oh, to call the other male. What a stretch. What a stretch. I'm going to go forward and keep up the rest. And we're going to have to leave the off. And the south. Um, turn that noise off. And hopefully. Hopefully, we'll get even.
there's a lot of Kumadol and Gala thing out of them. John and Luke and Unlock. Uh, there's Ocean on Samba. I just think thanks. We'll see, maybe something down here on Luke's parallel. Luke and come in. Well, we were here this morning. This road is okay. Most places. Now, what we want is to estimate more or less where they might come out and be able to see in front and behind us for some distance. They're going to move, maybe not. Uh, I've got to say anyway, I'm trying to get a bit of low light for the camera. Okay, um, you see, I'm 
Hinges to the crowd late Tuesday afternoon. In July. What is this? Sounded a lot louder than it is. Alarm call from a bird. question. What is the question? Hello everybody. Savannah. question comes in, we find something. There's a raptor in a tree. A raptor in a tree. I want to disturb it. But I do want to identify it. Juvenile bat alert. The same juvenile bat that we see flying around. And he's about to fly. He's about to fly. He's going to poop and fly. Why are you here, Bachelor? Is there a kill somewhere? Maybe from here we can get put. We can get it. Um. Hello, Savannah. In Georgia. You can just see the primary starting to lighten up on this battalier. Probably about a five, maybe six year old. It takes about seven years for them to get their adult plumage. A lot of eagles takes a good long time to become adults. And uh doesn't have any sign of the red face and the red feet that he will have as an adult. But, the question is, is there a reason why there is a battle there? Or is it just cold and no thermals and he's tired of flying and he's looking for some place to spend the night? And I just roll, use my gravity engine, just a Land Rover hybrid. And then it's going to go behind the seeds of that wattle. Beautiful big wattle, the African wattle. If they used the African wattle for tannin, for tanning leather, then they wouldn't have brought in the Australian wattle, and we wouldn't have an alien invasive problem. Hello, pretty bird. With dark, mostly silhouetted. 
it does have a little bit of a... Bye bye, Shimon Gwei. You can't. Yeah, I can, but uh, I was going to. But. Oh, so you didn't get it. <laughs> Not the end here. Nope. The uh, handle of the camera got stuck on the monitors. So, back to the question from Savannah. Savannah, and actually on behalf of a friend who shall remain anonymous. About the dams, are the dams man-made or... They're mostly man-made. There are a few pans that are naturally formed over time, but most of the dams and water holes that we see are man-made with an earth wall that has been dug up and... Um, catches the, the catchment in the summer in the rainy season catches excess rainfall um, surface flow or drainage you see once upon a time there was individual properties here and each property had their own collection of animals a, l a number of smaller properties only over time that they've all seen the benefit of opening up their fences and becoming part of a larger collective but it was those times when they were individual properties that everybody had to have their own dams and that's why there are a lot of dams here at Thorny Bush as there are in places like Pung so much for trying to get momentum to get over the it's like that really bad week that starts off you just can't get over Wednesday the hump is like Wednesday which is only tomorrow feels like we've had a whole week already um, Sabi Sand a number of these large private reserves even those that have been formed 50 years ago or more still have carry the remnants of the dams and water holes that were dug and built when they were privately or, or, or self-contained fenced-in properties the fact that the timber, uh, rather the thorny bush is also fenced and self-contained means that it is vital for a lot of these dams and water holes to be maintained and to carry water through the dry season important oh there goes a goshawk with a full crop dark tiny goshawk must have just killed something somewhere here so it's flying away and it's got a full crop Yes.
Another gale. Interesting question. Question that probably needs to lead to further research. But regarding the algae in the water that we saw where the lion was lying, and I'm sorry it was such a short sighting, but we're betting. I had to move an inch and then stop and move an inch and then stop. And eventually we managed to put the tail end of the jigger a little bit higher up against the damn wall. It wasn't the greatest, but at least we got to see him. But there was a very dense layer of algae on, the, on that dam. That little water hole. Dam. Water hole. Dam. Water hole. Same thing. Um, Gary wants to know if that algae can be harmful or whether it is, it is sim assimilated by the digestive system. Um, it can be harmful. It actually can become toxic when it starts dying off. And there are species of algae. I'm not too sure. Of, uh, I'm not too sure about all of this. I do, do know that there are some algae that develop that can become quite poisonous. Or yes, poisonous. And pose a threat. Yeah. A couple of seasons ago, there were a number of incidents in the Kruger of algae poisoning things like hippo and other animals. So, I'm not sure of the answer there. I'm not going to tell you something and then find that I have to correct myself because I don't really know. I'll have to look into that. On the whole, since I've lived with water holes and dam most of my life, We've never really found animals dying from this algae. I would assume that animals that do drink it, they manage to get to the water underneath the algae. The algae doesn't affect them too much. Um, otherwise, I would know, having found carcasses or having found animals that have died unexpectedly. But I need to research as to which types of algae are the ones that are, are, are toxic and I need more research. Quite a front, got quite dark cloud going to move in tonight. Maybe even some moisture. We should be seeing the new moon. I'm sure a lot of people are saying thank goodness it's not Ramadan or the end of Ramadan because Otherwise, I'd have another day of fasting ahead of them because you should see the first sliver of the moon tonight. Of the new moon. Yeah, bo -bo -bo. Hello, Blake in Kansas. Does controlled burning exacerbate the alien plant issue? It depends. Mostly, yes. Depends on the species of plant, but yes, certainly in places like the Western Cape, for example. Now, the Western Cape, I was talking about earlier, one of the most diverse botanical ecosystems on the planet with probably close to a thousand species of plants in one biome. That's a lot. 900 to a thousand species of plants in one area. That's a lot of different plants. And to compound it, the climate is dry summer, wet winter. And those hot dry summer winds are just the most, well, California, Arizona, Colorado, Hello, same kind of thing. Look, the plants have all adapted to fire. In fact, most of the plants of the Bainbos Cape 
need fire to germinate, they need fire to, to procreate, they need fire to even flower even. Um, but unfortunately, the alien plants that have invaded the Cape Rainbow have the kind of seed that is pretty resistant to almost every weather condition except fire and it's fire that triggers the germination of those trees and so after a fire instead of all your proteas and leucodendrons and leucospermans and ericas and those wonderful fane bush seeds instead of them coming up you're going to have portraction willow and you're going to have black wattle and you're going to have roycon and you're going to have eucalyptus another one there are other eucalypt species that also are invasive species in some cases perhaps fire at the right time could eliminate the seed content things like the red star zinnia for example the zinnias I don't believe would survive a fire and I believe that the fire could actually eliminate areas but I don't know not too sure about it but fire it can be a tool to eliminate some aliens but it can also exacerbate the spread of some aliens so it has to be used widely it's not something you can just make a general statement and say oh aliens this is them because what you're going to do is you're just going to where there was one tree you're now going to have a thousand and even if out of those thousands over the years attrition ends up that maybe only ten turn into trees you still got ten trees where there was only one and it's still one species creating a forest where there should be a diverse ecosystem of many hundreds of species instead of just one because that's all that grows in those areas those Port Jackson forests, those wattle forests, those um, what else is there? Roycon forests. There is leaf litter and seed load that lies on the ground prevents anything else from growing. So that replaces a diversity of hundreds and hundreds of species of plants and animals and turns it into virtually a monoculture and the only good thing for it is firewood and wood for barbecue or wood for making charcoal for barbecue so there's a thriving industry as well as a very small market of young entrepreneurs that are taking saplings and they're making wonderful arty chairs and, and art frames and um, room dividers and all sorts of wonderful things making it out of Port Jackson and Wattle and so has its uses in the in, in the in the act in the process of eliminating it there, there, there are cottage industries that are providing jobs and providing income for some people in the in, in the process of trying to eliminate these alien species and the government is actually playing a very important role uh, or they were they were actually putting a lot of money into um, safe herbicides into teams of people creating employment, teams of people to go into uh, mountainous areas and fanebush areas to eliminate the aliens. Um, that's not part of the big industry, of course. That's just really job creation and and doing something really positive for the environment for a change by trying to control the, control the aliens and at the same time provide jobs and provide wood and provide materials for different things they're even, they're even making school desks out of wood chips from things like aliens and stuff so keep on keeping up never eradicate them physically impossible to eradicate that density of seed yeah okay next question today was a talk about aliens
Clancy. Hi, Clancy. How? How do you pronounce it? How? How? Hey, You're welcome, Clancy. Hope you've enjoyed. Tomorrow, maybe, we get to see the lion a little bit longer. Let's hope those boys decide to walk our way. Maybe they're hungry, maybe they'll catch something. Let's hope the other cats come our way. Don't know what has happened to the elephant. They've just disappeared. Yo. We try it again. <laughs> no, try it this, again. this. Ah, uh, well, it might as well. We saw random lines. <laughs> well, now there's a name I haven't heard for a while. Hello, Kishmira. How are you, young lady? Wondering if there are any tribal groups, villages around Kruger, Corny Bush area. Yes, there are, and there is a lot of cultural, a lot of cultural uh, centres, and and yes, there are, there are. Remember, there was Dixie just outside of Derby Sand, where Rex and from. Okay, you're going to keep your revs up for me. Come on. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just can't get the ribs up enough. I don't know why. Half the time, the revs are too high, and I'm trying to slow her down, and half the time, she's coughing and splashing and jerking. This still injected engine. It's the 2.8 BMW fuel injected engine. It needs to burn. It needs to be on a racetrack, screaming around the bends at 9,000 revs. Starved, stifled, and what's another word with ST? Stalling. To drive around in second gear all day in a game with a full BMW. It's like this BMW meets other BMW engines to be green with envy. Um, okay, so. Let's descend. Daylight to an end. I have to take things apart tonight. Try to work on it today. Oh, I have to seriously get it. I can't get dirty. Blocks or no blocks. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. A Tuesday afternoon. Morning with private nature reserve. Mark behind the wheel, Aaron behind the camera, and David behind the email, and FFT. We shall see you at 6.30.